The daily life we perceive with our five senses is not reality. Quantum physics has shown that space and time are illusions of perception. Therefore, our bodies cannot truly be a reality if they occupy this space. Ernest Rutherford performed an experiment in Manchester that revealed to him the shape of the interior of an atom. Scientists were shocked to discover that the atom is almost entirely empty space. The question then became, how could this empty atom possibly make the solid world around us? Our true consciousness does not exist in our brains or in our bodies. But this illusion of our individual bodies, along with the misinformation of our true origins, has manifested the idea that we all think independently from one another. With this misunderstanding, it would seem impossible to scientifically explain telepathy, clairvoyance, spiritual mediums, and other phenomena dealing with transferring information between sources without physical means of communication. But when you understand that there is a common spiritual bond between all things in the universe, and that we are all part of one divine intelligence, no phenomena is unexplainable. This simple understanding fills all the holes in modern religions. It explains reincarnation, deja vu, predictions of the future, and literally every event, occurrence, or anomaly ever experienced. The blank matter within the most basic building blocks of perceivable existence is malleable and molded by intent. This means that consciousness shapes our reality. This seems difficult to accept for most, and it is quite understandable. In modern times, we are taught from an early age how to think rationally and tangibly. This is a very left-brain method of education, and it has more harmful effects than it's given credit for. The left brain deals with logic, details, facts, patterns, practicality, science, and math. As the right brain deals with feeling, intuition, symbols, images, risk-taking, philosophy, and religion. With a deliberate push for government-controlled educational curriculums, generation after generation of the youth are being taught to focus only on the facts, figures, and numbers. Repetition is used to train children subconsciously to accept what they're learning. Children aren't rewarded for questioning the validity of the information they receive. They're ridiculed. However, the children who blindly accept the information as true and merely regurgitate the information on command when it is time to take a test, those children go on to become the decision makers in our government, law, medicine, business, and every other occupation with power and prestige. The most detrimental effect of being pushed away from holistic thinking with the full brain into a strictly left brain thought is what is known as the suppression of the feminine. Every male and female have both feminine and masculine qualities. It has nothing to do with man or woman. These are represented by the left and right brain, yin and yang, black and white, light and dark, and most every other duality. Both are vital to our spiritual and physical health. In ancient Egypt, the female was the rightful heir to the throne. The male she chose to marry became Pharaoh. This depicted the goddess tradition that has been destroyed to make way for a patriarchal, male-dominated society we see enforced in every major denomination. In suppressing the feminine of every society and pushing the people to strictly left-brain thinking, the natural ability for humanity to feel earthly, cosmic, and personal energy became lost. Traditions that were passed on through shamans, witch doctors, magicians, psychics, and seers of all kind became outlawed and ridiculed and given a stigma of something out of a Hollywood movie. Every religion explains that we are children of God and have godliness inside of us. If you erase the anthropomorphized God and understand that God is nothing more than the spiritual web that connects all things, all religious scriptures begin to make much more sense. Our bodies are merely vessels to contain our spirit, to gather experience for the divine mind. This is how evolution is possible. It is scientifically proven that all species are evolving into more complex beings. Innate knowledge or racial memory within all species is the understanding of newborns of all kinds to automatically know specific details and traits that the mother does not have to teach them. Therefore, innate knowledge helps every species naturally evolve towards more complex organisms. Lyle Watson claims that it was a Japanese scientist who observed the 100th monkey effect in 1952. In this observation, he discovered that a certain portion or percentage of monkeys learned or developed a new trait. The knowledge became an innate ability in that species. This is further testimony to a collective consciousness among species.
Everything in existence has a natural vibration to it, from our atoms all the way to the vastness of the universe. To show a simple connection between the earth and our bodies, take a look at our body's harmonic focal points, better known as our chakras. Just as there are harmonic focal points on the guitar string, there are locations within our body where our vibrations culminate. In Eastern philosophies, these seven chakras are used to bring health and balance to the physical and spiritual body. Our Earth also has seven chakra points at equally distant locations from one another. There is one chakra point on each continent. The root chakra is in Mount Shasta, California. The sexual chakra is in the Isle of Sun, Lake Titicaca in South America. The solar plexus chakra is in Yulura Kata Juta in Australia. The heart chakra is in Glastonbury or Shaftesbury, England. The throat chakra is where the great pyramids of Giza in Egypt are. The heart chakra is at Kuhe Malak Sia in Iran. And the crown chakra is at Mount Kailas in Tibet. Scientifically, this is explained because at the core of our earth there is a molten iron crystal that resonates at approximately 7 hertz. There are energy vortexes all over the earth where electromagnetic energy emanates. There are also several vile vortices surrounding the equator where strange anomalies occur such as radio and compass malfunctions as well as plane and ship disappearances. You may have heard of a few of these. So the intangible parts of our existence, such as emotions, are part of the true reality of higher consciousness. If emotions are part of a realm that we cannot experience with our five senses, then how is it that we are all aware of our emotions? What most people believe to be emotions are not truly the emotion itself. What we are experiencing is the physical manifestation of these emotions. Anger causes disturbance in the psyche which manifests itself in the ego. These manifestations cause the heart rate to increase, body temperature to rise, and spawn many other physical traits that signify anger. Just as music from the radio is a physical manifestation of an intangible signal, our experience of emotion is the physical manifestation of an intangible signal as well. It has been shown that our emotions have a vibratory frequency to them. Furthermore, there are only two emotions that humankind experiences, fear and love. All other emotions branch either directly or indirectly from these two emotions. Fear has a long and slow frequency vibration to it, while love has a very rapid and high frequency. To show that vibration is the very foundation of existence, Hans Jene developed what is known as cymatics in the 1940s to show that when vibrations of sound are passed through a form of media, there is a set pattern that will follow. When the frequency increases, the media develops into a more complex pattern. This is precisely what is happening to our Earth and to humanity. There are 64 possible codes of amino acids in our DNA structure made from four elements, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. By any means of logic, we should have all 64 codes activated within our DNA structure. Yet we presently only have 20 active codes. And of these 64 possibilities, it appears that only 20 of these codes are turned on right now for us, the 20 amino acids. There is a switch that turns off and turns on where those coding sites lie, and that the switch uh, for that turning off and turning on is what we call emotion. And this is the first time that we've ever seen the patterns of emotion directly physically linked to human genetic material. Well, fear is a long, slow wave of emotion. So this wave of fear is a long, slow wave and touches relatively few sites on this DNA. So an individual living in fear is limited to the number of antenna that they have available to them. Whereas an individual uh, living in the pattern of love, this is love, in DNA, you can see it's, it's a higher frequency, shorter uh, wavelength. We have many more potential sites for coding uh, along that genetic pattern. This information, this is amazing. This is the first time we've ever had a hard digital link between emotion and genetics. This is important to understand because another researcher named Vladimir Popanov measured tiny particles of light called photons inside a vacuum tube. The photons were scattered as expected. 
A sample of DNA was then entered into the vacuum tube and they measured the photons again. They found that the particles of light aligned themselves along the axis of the DNA. Then, as they removed the DNA sample, the photons remained aligned to the same form of the DNA even though no DNA was present. This is what is known as the phantom DNA experiment. Science has now bridged a very important gap between physical and ethereal, or spiritual. Our emotions directly affect the structure of our DNA, which directly shapes the physical world we experience every day. So the messages left by the ancients that we've explained here were more than just prophecies about a one world government or a new world order. We now understand why the study of the heavenly bodies were so important. The rotation and orbit of all that makes up our universe serves as a clock to map changes and transitions.